welcome to Moscow. This says Moscow Metro Station Arbatskaya. And I am at Arbat, Ulitsa Arbat, so Arbat Street, which is a very famous street in Moscow. Apparently lots of tourists, lots of people. So time to go for a city tour walk down Arbat Street. I've never been here. The Google and Yandex Maps GPS seems to be faulty in this area, so I've had to ask my way down here. But now I'm here, so let's go for a stroll down. It's about, I think this beginning of it, from what that lady just told me, is kind of this intersection here. So this will be a fairly normal city tour video with a little bit of a chit chat from me. Uh, you probably know me already, you're probably a subscriber. I've watched many of my videos from here. Uh, of course, I'm based more in Belarus, but I've just jumped the border for a couple of months. Make some videos, see what life's about on this side of the border. So it looks like this will be roughly the beginning here, this big intersection. I'll try and get across this and try to, well, not try to, we will succeed in our uh, mission to walk down uh, this street that brief interruption so it looks like we're going to walk under that walkway there and we should pop up at the beginning of this very busy intersection I have to say one of the busier ones I've seen here in Moscow I've been here in total across my stay in Moscow maybe three weeks and it's a very busy city I have to say easy to get around though which is the beauty of it I think it's has that kind of a uh, New York mentality, you know, that Billy Joel song, New York State of Mind. You could almost write a Russian version, Moscovian state of mind, right? That kind of a, uh, when I don't want to waste more time, I'm in a Moscow state of mind. That's really what it's like here. People are in a hurry, they're walking quickly there. But it's very civil, it's good etiquette here. Quite good social etiquette here in Moscow. People are very polite and to each other. Uh, not just for the token foreigner being me. But you can see they help each other a lot and there is actually a culture of helping each other a lot uh, here, which is nice. Um, that people are patient with each other. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, obviously. I know some of you are going to be saying, no, that's not true. We're such bad people. Um, maybe people are less helpful outside of uh, Moscow. As always, the capital city doesn't very well reflect the uh, broader national culture, is what everyone says here in Russia and also in many countries. The same thing is said. Although in Australia, it's kind of different because we don't have this big capital city thing. We have two major cities <clears throat> that are still kind of suburban by nature. Whereas here in Moscow, it's where you come if you love money and you want lots of it. So you can see <clears throat> probably new apartments, I guess, going up to match these. Looks like they're fairly recent builds. There's apartments here on the right-hand side, on the opposite side. So this would be Arbat Street now, is what I'm guessing. There you go, Novi Arbat Litsa. So that's a uh, new Arbat Street. New Arbat, Arbat. They roll the R in Russian, Arbat. So I was told this is kind of touristy and you can see a few families and stuff. A bit of business foot traffic. It's a weird time. It's around 5 p.m. on a Friday. So you're getting kind of everyone thrown in here. In what is a very busy street because Moscow is very decentralized, yeah? It's very decentralized. So you don't get super condensed foot traffic anywhere. Well, not often anyway. Not often. 
because it's so spread out, decentralized, very decentralized. The metro system does a fantastic job of getting everyone. Oh, here we go. Well, it's actually a pub. That word pub is very, uh, well, it's very English, isn't it? We have it in Australia, it's well known in England, and the public bar, of course, it translates to, and it looks like a very uh, place very much themed in that way. So it tells you that we may be a bit touristy around here. I haven't seen a place like that living in kind of normal areas of Moscow. I've lived in three parts of Moscow and I haven't seen anywhere like that before. As to be said. Alright, about to go back into the sun. And you can see some of the, I don't know if that's the business center up there. I'd suggest it might be. Could be further up in the horizon there on the horizon <laughs> I, I, uh, the reason I'm laughing at my own uh, five-year-old grammatical error is uh, uh, of course when you're trying to juggle multiple languages in your head and words such as in on at uh, are a little bit complicated they're not direct translations necessarily uh, between Russian and English sometimes find yourself mixing your languages look it looks busier this way so let's go this way for a bit of a walk get away from the cars get away from the sun and uh, head this way this is what you see a lot of in Moscow man a lot of buskers and they're almost always really young guys and girls to be fair. <coughs> oh, this guy is oh, maybe he's 30. Maybe 30 or so, kind of balding. But often they're only like 20 or even younger. Some of the buskers. It's quite a strong busking culture. I'm surprised how much the Russians get around their buskers, man. Like sometimes you can see at nighttime a busker with 100 people watching. Sometimes no one's watching, but sometimes in uh, when people have got time, they really get around them. It's interesting to see. Um, yeah, you can tell the tempo is a bit lower, right? People are chilled. Like often in Moscow, people are walking at you know, seven, eight kilometers an hour. It's quite common to walk at this pace. You can tell it's kind of made for chilling out, more modern. The seats here. I'm not sure what the point of this is, you can only really fit one person there. But nonetheless, this guy's doing something. Oh, I've got some books. Oh, no, no. He's winning, he's winning. But crash, crash. He's probably worried about tax. <laughs> uh, he said Robotsky at the end, which is like a worker or something. Um, I didn't realize he was going to keep talking, so I stopped paying attention to what he was saying, so I kind of missed it. But you'll be able to hear it on the replay there. It'll be fun for the kids, get amongst it. <coughs> I know uh, <laughs> when I was filming once in a smallish town in Belarus, when I say small, I'm talking like you know, small. I mean like uh, I don't know, one or two thousand people or something to go this sun. I'm curious, this Star's Coffee is quite busy. Uh, you don't see many busy coffee shops here. Uh, yeah, I was in a smallish town, like yeah, one or two thousand people. Let's go over out of the sun here, shall we? <coughs> and uh, I was just doing a, a, a walk around video, just trying to work out what's going on in this town, right? Uh, this was uh, a town called Legation, which is near Pinsk. If you have a uh, maps with you now, First of all, I'm jealous if it works, uh, but it's near Pinsk on the southern border there of Poland. Uh, small town. Uh, my friend's Nana lives there, so I went down there, visited her, picked some potatoes, some random swings there. Uh, anyway, I was just doing a bit of a walk around, just film like what's going on there, what are these people doing? And uh, I was filming just this little flea market thing that is on the side of the road, just maybe 10 people with little tables and a little van there and oh man was I met with some hostility 
They were losing their shit at me, some of the babushkas, I'll tell you what. I have to say, there's a lot of flowers at the moment in Moscow, and it needs it. It's you know, these big concrete jungles, they're pretty dehumanizing at the best of time. Zip. So, explore this a little bit further. There we go. You got some nice signs. I like to include signs so you can kind of get a sense of exactly where I am. Let's move a more this way, shall we? Mm, nice place to sit down. I'll show you how you do it. It's like uh, Russia's Moscow's birthday or something like this. It's the Dom Rajdenia. It's with the birthday of uh, Moscow. Uh, this must be sometime in the future, maybe. I'm not sure. I didn't realize this was happening. I would have thought people were talking about it, so maybe it's there from a long time ago or it's up early for following time. But yeah, I'm getting a bit of a after five knockoff drinks vibe here. It is the vibe I'm getting. Oh, this guy's filming. The camaraderie, no, he's not looking at me, doesn't want to connect. I was curious when people are filming. I wonder if he's actually got a decent chance. There's a lot of like street walking channels, right? There's a lot of them, and most of them are pretty much invisible. Um, so I've been using them a lot to research other places to go in Russia, right? Like, yeah, you know, places like Dagestan or random kind of mid tier cities. Like, where can I go? Let's watch some street walking videos get a sense of what places are like, you know? Hey, there you go, performance for the camera there. This guy in the scoot, if you didn't see it. Give us a nice g'day, mate. Because you probably don't have as many people jump into the camera here. Like, in Belarus, people love getting into the camera. And to be honest, in most countries they do. Even recently, I was in uh, Lithuania and uh, Finland, told you. And even in Australia, when I've done filming there, People love to photobomb, man. They love to get amongst it. The Russians don't photobomb as much. <coughs> but I've noticed when everyone's watching me and I say hello, they're always kind of keen to engage. Well, not always, but often. I did a walking video yesterday in Kremlin Park and there was a group of school kids, <coughs> maybe 50 of them, and probably 10 of them were looking over, so I just waved over and said, it's the And the crowd went wild, mate. They were like, woo, yeah, YouTube, here we come, baby. And I really find that teenagers connect the most with this stuff. I think that that's kind of their world, right? It's often the 14, 15, 16 year olds that uh, get amongst the photo bombing and wanting to talk and just like approaching me randomly as well. So that glare isn't too bad for you guys. So yeah, this is obviously quite an after five kind of place here. See a couple of dates happening. Uh, yeah, definitely semi-tourist, semi-after five. Reminds me of South Bank in Melbourne, Australia, if you've ever been there. A bit of a mixture of tourists and uh, after fivers. Spilling from the offices, man, that is a. Uh, uh, yeah. Talking about those offices. There they are. Some of this crowd spilling down from there, no doubt. As well as the tourist crowd. You know, this and that crowd. Let's continue on, shall we? What I'm not noticing around here are scooters. I've noticed quite a few bicycles. Go past, there's one of these famous Moscovian buses. A couple just going past there with the bikes. Usually what you have are the scooters rushing by your ears, almost hitting you. You're thinking, how did they miss me? Weaving in and out of the crowds. Oh, he photobombed me, I missed him. He did it too late.
It's like a fairly significant retail set up here. Maybe it's just one shop. They have a website. This is true. So more restaurants up here. It's pretty busy. This young fella on his scooter getting their son. These little dogs. Red flag, man. The girl's got a little dog. Red flag. <laughs> oh, I just forgot about this. Wait one minute. I'm going to change the camera angle. Look at that shit. You can see me at the same time. How cool. Does anyone move this little thing? Oh, look, I can move it around. Where's the best place for it, you reckon? Let's pop it down in this corner. That's pretty cool. You can look at my beautiful head as I speak a whole lot of shit. Check that out. That's pretty cool, man. I was just playing around with my camera the other day thinking, you know what? I need to up my YouTube game. And I started touching buttons. Man, that is a glare and a half. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna go to the sunnies. I can't say sunglasses in Russian. Of course, Wachki is glasses, but it's like a long, you know how they make these really long words? Like Solnsa, of course, the sun, but Solnsky, Chesky, and Naya, <laughs> the usual endings. <laughs> Archki. Ochki. Ochki. Yeah, this sun's really bright. I hope this video turns out well. I'm struggling to see a lot, I have to confess. But yeah, nice and busy. You don't get many of these restaurant areas. I haven't seen too many of them, to be honest. Uh, even down near Red Square, you don't really get this. Patriarch's Pond is kind of the main place where I've seen this kind of density of, of uh, restaurants. <clears throat> A nice little kind of Italian barashka. Got no idea what that even means. Restaurant barashka, obviously. Well, I'm gonna guess that's just the name of the restaurant. I was expecting it to have some kind of a Italian kind of name. Let's chill over here for a moment. See, got something going on here, some kind of walkway again. Well curated flowers. Sorry, I forgot about the second little camera there in my face. I'm going to look at half my face, I might look at the whole thing. So that lady that walked past us then, swinging her hair around, looking for attention, she is a part of this worldwide phenomenon of 30-something single professional women who have been raised to produce goods and services and consume goods and services. And now you just got so many of these girls in capital cities with good jobs, making money, and are kind of just a bit lost in life. That's what I'm seeing. These young fellas doing their thing. It's hardcore crew cusk of those. Oh, that's the way, mate. You used to do those at home. You got a little buzz, buzzer thing there. Oh, what's going on here? All right, so we stumbled across something. Well, you might see Russian superheroes in there. And uh, I'm filming this the day after a certain person's plane got shot out of the sky. I won't mention any key words there. You can probably guess, well, who knows? So much is happening in that space at the moment, but these guys are obviously queuing for something. Mainly kind of 14, 15 year olds. doing their thing. Holy fuck, there's like three, four hundred of them, maybe more actually. So uh, just take a little step back here, guys. So see how far this queue goes. Holy shit, there's like four, five hundred of these kids just queuing here. They're not, surprisingly, they haven't got that like shitty kind of Gen Z thing about them. <laughs> like, they're quite westernized in their dress and so forth, but they haven't got that miserable I want to kill myself, why am I alive, kind of Gen Z vibe about it, which is wonderful to see. I guess they're the next generation, are they? Whatever, what's after Gen Z? And there's no. These girls enjoying their beers. <laughs> Four 13 year olds drinking beers. <laughs> Ooh, that's a funny shit. All right, we can keep going this way. Oh, some shade, that's good. We 
can keep going this way for a bit, but I think there's not much interesting there. I think we've kind of covered the main part here. Let's go to this street and look down. I think we've covered the key parts here, ladies and gentlemen. So this is, you may know better than I, what's going on here. Russian superheroes. If you do know what this is, feel free to uh, comment below and tell me. It's your thing. In the meantime, I'll say see you later to you guys.